Well, greetings. This is Trev from OnlinePCLearning.com. I'm going to show you how to create this little application. We've got an overview video, overview video up there to show how everything is set up and how everything works. So if you've watched that video, we're ready to go. It's a little application that allows us to choose a category, a name, and then we populate a title and also look up some information and import a picture from a folder that is not in Microsoft Excel. So if you've been to the website, you'd notice that there is two files to download the template and also the photos. I hope you've downloaded them, put your photos onto desktop and then follow along with this tutorial and I'll show you how to put it all together. So here is our template. First thing we want to do is put in the file path. We'll be doing this with code later on. We'll be clicking here and the code will enable it. We'll be able to go and, and have it done automatically. But for now to get started, we want to manually enter the file path to the folder that contains the pictures. So how are we going to do that? Well, minimize Excel, go to your desktop, find that photo folder, right click it and choose properties and then grab the location there. See users Trevor desktop. See it there and go copy. Just copy it over. Now open up Microsoft Excel again and this time click in the cell and go to the formula bar. Don't try and paste it straight in the cell and then paste into here. Because the cell is merged, if you try and paste straight into it, you may have a problem. So there it is and then put a trailing slash on the back of it. That's the file path to the folder that contains the pictures. And we'll be referencing that and adding the picture name to that dynamically. Let's go and add two dynamic named ranges now. We want a dynamic named range to pick up information here and as more is added, as we add more, we want to be able to pick it up. And we also need to pick up the information that's running across this way, those four columns. So here's the two dynamic named ranges to do that. We'll just go to Formulas, Name Manager and our first named range, we'll just widen this up so we can see it, is called PIC, P-I-C. Right, all we need to do is put in an equal sign and type offset. Open bracket and then click into our first cell. We don't want to offset any rows or columns, so put in three commas and then put in the function count a. Because we're using text, if we're using numbers, we would use count. And then scroll down over this area here. You see it says D15. Take the five out and change that to a thousand. I don't think we're going to have more than a thousand pictures. And then two closing brackets. And that will give us a dynamic named range called pick. Let's test that. Yes, it's working just fine. Bring this over and you can see it. Okay, we'll add one more, a new dynamic named range. This is called Picks All. Now there is the name Picks All and there's the dynamic named range offset from D7, counter D7 to D1000. And then there's a comma. Now we go to the columns section after the comma and it's four columns. So let's see if that works. Click into here and we're going to go OK and we're going to test this one. Pixel, it's picking up the four columns, exactly what we need. So close it up, there's the two dynamic named ranges we need for this application. Now just checking back with the website, we've set the file path, we've added the two dynamic named ranges, there's some pictures there to help you if you're not sure, and a tutorial here that'll take you through to VLOOKUP because we're going to now add some VLOOKUP formulas. First of all, we'll just put a very simple formula in, and here's the the VLOOKUP formula. Grab this cell C16 on the interface sheet. So just copy this over, go to your Excel application, go back to the interface sheet. I'm sorry if you're watching, you probably noticed that was E16. Here it is here. We're going to put a VLOOKUP formula in there. So don't try and paste it into that cell. Go up to the formula bar again and do exactly the same. It's just simply saying if C11 is empty, put nothing. Otherwise, look up C11, the Dynamic named range, picks all, second column please, and give us that information. Alright, so all we then do is push enter. And there it's looked up the information for us. Now with this cell here, just push the equal sign and type into there, click into there, so it's equal C11 and hit enter. That's all we need to do. Now the next thing on this is to unhide a hidden column. So between F and H, there's a hidden column, unhide it. And we need to put a formula into here. And here we'll find the formula in for G11. Here it is here, G11, copy it over from the website, copy the formula back into Excel and click into the cell but paste into the formula bar, always do that. And there it is, hit the enter key 
to accept the formula. It's saying zero because at the moment we don't have all the information we need on our data sheet, but that's fine. We'll leave it at that for now. Now what we can do, we'll leave that open, but we will hide this column a little later on. We now want to go to the data sheet and add our formulas down here. And they are formulas that will help us file path that we put in earlier with the name of the picture and the picture um, file type. So back on the website, just the one formula, data sheet formula. Here it is here, equals, and it goes right across there, copy it over, and back to our Excel program. Pop it into here, and we'll just go to the formula bar and paste it in, nice and easy. The formula's in, hit enter, then go back into here, copy the formula once again, click the cell underneath it, and go down to say cell 100. Is, I, mean, I don't know how many photos you think you want to put in, but this will... As many photos as you think you might have, click the first cell underneath, hold down your shift key and go right down to wherever you think you want. I'd say probably cell 100 would be fine. Right click and then paste formulas. Now I've set the formula up in such a way that it is absolute where it needs to be and relative where it needs to be. So you can paste that straight in. Hit the escape key to clear the, clip, the clipboard. Well, that's all we need to do on this sheet. What I'd suggest you do here now we have a full file path here for each of the pictures. What I'd suggest you do is hide that sheet, hide that column, and also, in the interest of good housekeeping, on the view tab, get rid of the headers, get rid of the formula bar, and get rid of the grid lines. Looks a lot nicer if you do that. And then back to the interface sheet now to finish off what we need to do. So our next thing is to put in a drop-down list, some data validation. Well, that shouldn't be difficult. Let's have a look at that. The data validation goes into here. So it'd be data, data validation, where is it? There, yes, data validation. And we want to put in a list. Put in an input message if you want. That's optional. Click into the source box, hit the F3 key, and then put in pick. OK and OK. Now we have a drop-down list here. When we click the drop-down list, you'll notice the file path over here on the right is changing. See that? Now the next thing we need to do is delete this image and record two macros. So go to the Developer tab. If you don't see the Developer tab, go to Files, Options, and tick the box next to it in the options that you have. Here's the Developer tab. We're going to go Record Macro. So we go Record Macro. Leave everything as a default because this is just to get us the code we need to adapt. And go OK. Now with the Macro Recording, go Insert, Picture, and navigate to where that folder is with your pictures on the desktop. So it was called Photo, wasn't it? We should find a, fo a fo folder here called Photos. And just pick any picture and insert it. There it is. It's inserted in over here. That's fine. And then stop recording. All right, we're going to record another macro. So we go to the Developer tab, Record Macro. Here it is there. And we just go OK. Now go to the Home tab. Choose Find and Select. Go to Special, Objects, OK, and hit Delete. And then stop recording your macro. Let's have a look at that code now with the Visual Basic Editor. Alt and F11 to open up the Visual Basic Editor, and we should be able to see those two macros that we recorded. Here they are here. Active Sheet Pictures Insert, and there you see the file path all the way through. But now our file path is going to be a variable file path. I'll just try and minimize this. Think about this for a moment. That file path, this is the varying file path in here. Remember we put in the data validation. When we do that, it changes and it changes the file path. So all we need to do in our code is find out that cell reference. Now that cell reference, if we have a look at our formula bar, that cell reference is G11. Alt and F11. If we were to put in here that that is active sheet cell G11 instead of the file path, well, every time we change G11, the file path will change. Brilliant. And then here's the piece of code to delete the objects before we add a new one. So let's combine that. We'll get the code from the website. We'll go back here to module one and we'll put it in and I'm sure you'll see how this works. So here we are back on the website. Here's all the information there about recording those two macros so that you can see the code that you need to use. And here is the completed piece of code. We're nearly finished this application, you know. We'll just click onto that, 
right click and go copy and then we'll go back over to our Visual Basic Editor and paste it in. That's it. Our macro is in. Now let's go through that. Let's have a look at that. We're saying on error resume next. And then dim range is range. Application screen updating equals false. That'll stop screen flicker and hold things in memory while we're working. It says active sheet, drawing objects, delete. That's the second macro we recorded. And then it says range H15 select. That's where we want to paste the picture. Active sheet pictures insert. Remember I said just add range G11 value. Select. And we'll also just put in here to make the picture standard we're going to say selection height equals 400. And then because we don't want the image highlighted when our macro finishes running we're just going to select any other cell so we're just going to say range E16 select. And then we're resetting our error handler at the bottom. Very simple and will work like a treat. Now it won't work for us yet because we've got to add some extra code. But we'll just check on the website because there's another piece of code. Remember I mentioned that we we're going to be able to find that file path with some code? Well here it is here. I'll put it together for you here. You can use this piece of code to be able to use a macro to navigate to that file path. So copy that over as well. Go to the Visual Basic Editor and paste it underneath here as the second macro. Now you'll notice our message box when we paste that in has come up with a bit of an error. If that happens just click the delete button there and over there just to get rid of the spaces that was causing the error. Alright so there's our second piece of code. Now there's two more things we need to do here. We need to go to the sheet code. Now the sheet code is here. Go to the interface tab right click and choose view code. Now we're in the sheet one interface code area. Okay. In that area we need to paste two um, pieces of code that when we click on two cells it's going to run macros. One cell is going to run a macro to be able to import the file path and the other is going to run a macro to change to run that quick pick macro that's going to actually import the picture. So here's the code. We'll just grab it from the website again. Just down a little bit further. These are the worksheet events. So here's your first one. Copy that over into the Visual Basic Editor into the sheet event. Make sure you put it in there and paste it in. Go back to the website and grab that second piece of code and copy it over. And then of course back to the Visual Basic Editor, put it underneath and paste that in as well. Now that's just basically saying we could have actually said here if target range equals C7 but I've used the if not intersect because you can then put in a full range if you have to. So it says range C7 is nothing run that macro called folder select and when we intersect C11 which is where the data validation is and we're using a change event here the other one we're using before double click event so when we change the value with that data validation we're going to run this macro which is going to import that image it's going to delete the old one and import a new one so does that work for us let's go and have a look because transferring this from the website you might have a little bit of a problem I'll just go back into the Visual Basic Editor make sure in that folder file dialog make sure that there is a backslash between those two double quotes in there okay make sure that's in there and that will add a backslash into your file path so if we go and find our file path by double clicking and then we choose photos which is here and okay it will put the backslash in now when we double click on or when we click on our data validation our images are added and everything will work fine so we just need to make sure that we have a few things in order here. Make sure when you put new images in, you put in the title you want here, any sort of blurb you want there, but make sure you put in the extension here. This is the, the last part or your file name. So this will be whatever you call the file plus the file type. So this is a PNG file. So I've called this file demo9 and at the type of file is PNG. So that's pretty much it. You can now play around with that and adapt it to suit whatever needs you have. This is Trev from OnlinePCLearning.com. Thank you very much for listening. What you might also want to do, just to think about it, you might want to protect this sheet. And when you do protect it, just click here and allow edit objects to happen. So that's now a protected sheet. The reason for that is we've got a formula here that could be deleted. Thank you very much for listening and bye for now.